It's time now for Mark Meets, in which I speak to the biggest names in the world of showbiz, sport, politics, business and beyond, as well as those who simply have a big story to tell. Tonight, let's meet Devon Harris, a former military officer and retired bobsledder who was one of the founding members of the Jamaican national bobsled team, which first competed in the 1988 Winter Olympics and which famously inspired the hit Disney movie Cool Runnings, starring the late John Candy. As well as inspiring a movie, Devon was honoured by the World Olympians Association and inducted as an Olympian for life in recognition of the significant contribution he made to society in inspiring others never to give up. Devon founded the Keep On Pushing Foundation, which supports the education of kids disadvantaged uh, in disadvantaged communities. He also wrote Yes, I Can, the story of the Jamaican bobsled team and keep on pushing hot lessons from cool runnings. Not surprisingly, Devon Harris is now an in-demand motivational speaker. And just telling you about his life puts me in a good mood. Well, I'm delighted to say that Devon Harris joins us now. Hi, Devon. Hey, Mark, I'm delighted to join you as well. You, I'm sure, will be interested in knowing. I have no tattoos, but I have lots of scars. Oh, so, yeah, I'm sure you do. do. I mean, for, for those that don't know, explain how bobsleighing actually works. Well, it is a winter sport. Um, and I know there, it's an oxymoron, Jamaica bobsled. Um, but it's, uh, we have two different kinds, uh, two-man and four-man sleds. The guy in the front is a driver, and then you'll have a brake man or three pushers in the back. The dry, so you obviously push the sled to get it started. You jump on. Um, the guys in the back are basically just kind of sitting there and praying. And the guy in the front, he has two ropes, and you basically pull left to go left, right to go right, very minimal, lots of hand-eye coordination, high intensity, high focus. And you get to the bottom, and it's exhilarating. The champagne of thrills, Mark. What sorts of speeds would you achieve in a bobsled? Yeah, so forgive me for not using metrics. I live in America. Um, 80 to 90 miles an hour is where we get up to uh, on the fastest strats. That's remarkable. And what about the peril? How dangerous is it, Devon? Well, you could literally lose your head. Um, that's all. So you could get away with just some normally bumps and bruises. That's typical in Bob setting, but it could become deadly as well. Yeah. Were you That's a sporty... We were home, by the way. Were you, yeah, you definitely need that. Were you a sporty <laughs> child? Yes, I grew up uh, playing football. I almost said soccer. I'm um, sure you how Americanized I am. Uh, and then I ran track. I actually, uh, although I'm Jamaican, I ran 800 and 1500 meters. My idol at the time was Lord Sebastian Poe. And I dreamed that I was going to compete in the Olympics in those events, but I ended up being a bobsledder. Well, yes, and it was uh, suggested, someone suggested to you that there should be a Jamaican team at the Winter Olympics. And at first, I think you were reluctant. Yes, so as I mentioned, I'm a military officer and I'm a Sandhurst grad. And so shortly after my time at Sandhurst, I'm back in Jamaica working and the idea came up. And I remember thinking nobody could ever get me to go on one of those things until my commanding officer literally told me that I'm going to the team trials. And, you know, that just changed the entire equation, didn't it? So at the time, your attitude was, I will go to war, I will enter military combat, but I'm not going to the Olympics. Because Jamaica Bob said to me at the time, just sounded, as I described it, the worst idea ever conceived by man. I had interest in going to the Olympics, but not to bobsled, but, you know, Yes, it goes to show how young and foolish we can be at times, right? Uh, absolutely. And of course, the story is immortalized in that movie, Cool Runnings. How much of the movie is authentic and true, like the fact that you had to practice at home in Jamaica, even though there was no ice and no snow? Well, I like to say when the credits roll, it says loosely based. The two, uh, two, it should say very loosely based on the true story. We did practice in Jamaica, but not as the movie suggested. We had a makeshift sled that we pushed on a flat concrete surface just to kind of practice the starts. And of course we ran and we lifted weights, but that's the extent of which you can sensibly practice for bobsledding in a tropical environment.
And tell me about your emotions when you arrived at the Winter Olympics and, of course, did so well. Mm. You know how you grew up and you're watching the Olympics, these men and women marching in the opening ceremonies, and you're thinking, wow, those must be some of the best athletes in the world. And then one day, you are the person step setting foot in that stadium, 50,000 people screaming, and I promise you more cameras than you can count. And you know, because you've seen this movie before, that in this instant, your, your images on TV sets across the world, and you're just hoping that you can live up to that, uh, you, you know, thinking that some little kid is going, wow, he must be one of the best athletes in the world. I mean, in that moment, you're living the dream, literally. And representing your country, you must have been so proud. Oh, I mean, I think every athlete dream of representing their country. And so being able to do that, and yes, being one of the first to actually do it at the Winter Olympics just made it extra special, absolutely. Did the movie change your life? I don't, that's a really good question. I think the experience of going to the Olympics, being on the bobsled team changed my life. It, it's virtually impossible, I believe, to have done something um, so intense and, and so challenging and not having it change the way you think, right? And I, so I often say that the biggest lesson I learned was not the fact that I could learn to bobsled in a very short period of time, but that I could literally accomplish anything that I truly set my mind to. And that really just allowed me to raise my game to a, to a completely different level. I've done the skeleton, which I found quite scary. I think that's maybe, well, certainly in my case, when I was on a show called The Jump, which was a, a winter sports show on Channel 4, I think we were clearing about 70 miles an hour face down, head first on a sheet of polished ice, but it, it wasn't 80, 90 miles an hour like you with colleagues. Uh, did you have a few crashes? Oh yeah, well, I, first of all, I've never done skeleton because my excuse is I like company. Um, <laughs> but yeah, of course, uh, the, the most famous of the crashes is the one that took place in Calgary during the Olympic games. But that season was, I want to say that crash was my sixth or seventh for the season. So. It is really part of the process, man. If you're playing cricket, every now and again, you're going to get hit by a ball. You know, in Bob setting, you're going to crash every now and again, too. How did your career in the military serving at Sandhurst, for example, equip you for this great challenge? Really good question. You know, when I was my early days of Bob setting, I equate to uh, my time at Sandhurst. You know, when you're there, you're going through these long periods of intense physical activity with very little rest. And our early days in Bob setting were very similar. And so mentally I'll go, oh, I've seen this movie before. This is kind of like at Sandhurst. And that really, uh, I would say above my athletic abilities, helped me to deal with the challenges of, uh, you know, trying to learn Bob setting and qualify for the Olympics in a matter of months. Tell me about somebody that I wonder has been inspired by your story, Benjamin Alexander, who's going to become Jamaica's first Olympic alpine ski racer at the Winter Olympics. That is so cool, actually. Um, I'm really in impressed and I'm inspired by him and, and his own journey. I think it's just amazing. You know, when we started this journey, it really was just to qualify for the Olympics and fulfill that dream of representing our country, but to be able to see others uh, in all walks of life, you know, and, and Benjamin in particular, and of course, we have a, 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 a bobsled team qualifying this uh, year is also amazing. Can I tell you a really quick story? I just got an Instagram message from a young man who we signed a t-shirt for him at eight years old when he had just finished, uh, got, undergone brain surgery. And he just, uh, message me on Instagram. He still has a shirt and, and how much that means, you know. So sometimes when you're pursuing your dreams and you should, man, in the process, you are, in fact, touching the lives of others. And that, that makes it all worthwhile. Are you still in touch with the other boys you competed with? Yeah, loosely. Uh, Michael White actually lives in New York here, and I do owe him a call. I call you, Michael. Um, uh, you know, and, and Chris and Dulles Stokes, uh, you know, they're a little bit more involved 
we have been uh, in touch loosely over the years. Well, I'm pleased to hear it. Now, you are a motivational speaker. Uh, you've got a, a, a huge following uh, in that area. Uh, what do you think mm -hmm. are the key lessons for life that you've learned through your amazing sporting endeavor? Yeah, uh, you know, I think it's all encapsulated in my in my message, keep on pushing, which obviously has a Bob said analogy. But more than that, it's really about growth. It's about this dynamic, ever changing process through which all of us have to transform ourselves. And in the process, we are transforming the people and the organizations around us and also uh, finding a way to push ourselves over, around, across, under whatever obstacle uh, that we may be facing. Because there is, you know, I call it the worst secret in the world is that there's going to be obstacles between us and the life we dream of. And we have to figure a way to push whatever obstacle it is out of the way to live that life. So if anybody that's watching this is going through a tough time, of course, we've had a very challenging pandemic, haven't we, Devon? What would your be, uh, advice be to anyone watching that feels like they're stuck and they want their life to change, but they can't make it change? Yeah, I mean, first of all, you can't give up, right? Um, and so in, in, even in the midst of the challenges, Embrace the challenge. Uh, don't pretend, like don't dip your, your head in the sand like an ostrich and pretend that, hey, this is not happening. Embrace it, kind of like a boxer in the ring getting punched, right? But then he or she comes out swinging. And so as you're in that challenge, you need to figure out what you like your life to be like on the other end. Figure out that vision, create that dream, uh, you know, set those goals. And then step by step, uh, you know, just inch by inch, start working towards them, embracing the challenge, develop that, you know, what we call a resilient mindset. It was really just kind of staying in the moment and working through the challenges while at the same time focusing on the goals that you want. And you will eventually get out. I am sure of it. What's the best way for people to find out about what you do? Uh, easiest way is my name, DevonHarris.com, DevonHarris.com. And of course, on Instagram and Twitter, I'm at Keep On Pushing 88 as well. So come over there and, and connect with me. Uh, listen, you remain an ongoing inspiration. It's been a privilege to have you on the show, Devon. And let's speak again soon. The remarkable Devon Harris and his website is DevonHarris.com. Fantastic stuff. Yeah. What a great movie that was, by the way. Cool runnings. Thanks, Devon.